Hello, everybody out there, Bakes here. Back there, review all. Everybody back here with uh, our episode by the Hair Bakes Showtime podcast, everybody. Episode 6 of the podcast, everybody. Hope you all had a good week this past week, everybody. And while well, we do have a good number of things to get on the podcast, everyone, uh, over a bit of birthday shouts for week, everybody, as well cover different things, everybody. Uh, and also answer the question, everybody, that was left on the previous episode, everyone. Uh, as I said before, what for any of you want to leave questions for like video sections, everybody, for the po- next episode of the podcast, everybody, just leave that in comments below there, but. But before we get to everyone, uh, do, do I want to take this time to talk about a couple quick things, everybody? First of all, apologies, everybody, for a bit of the layer by in regards of this episode, everyone. Um, I got a lot of power some stuff, everybody, so I had a chance to get to record a podcast up till now, everybody. It's nighttime, so there you go, when I'm recording this, everyone, so. And um, I'll make sure I have the podcast up tomorrow there for Monday, everyone, so. Apologies for my delay, everybody. Hopefully, this will be a one-time thing there, so yeah. Um, the other thing, uh, the podcast are real quick, everybody, uh, is that after this episode, by uh, the podcast will be all a little bit about a breaker, by. Uh, for those who may remember last episode, by I talked about it briefly there, but, um, later on this week, by I will be going on a family vacation there. Me and different members of family will be going down the Gulf Shores there for about a week or so, and, um, so everybody, there won't be any episodes for the podcast next week, everybody, but the podcast will be coming back for episodes, everybody, about two which weeks from now there, so... But unless any of my family members want to do any, like collab videos there, I usually don't focus on doing videos for a channel uh, during the vacation tab there. So just want to give you all a heads up there for those of you who have uh, missed the heads up there for the last time there and whatnot. So yeah. As for you, this will be my last video in general, everybody, for a good while, everybody, until I do come back from my vacation, everybody, which you'll probably see sometime either next Wednesday or Thursday there. So when I'll probably be able to upload our video there once. So yeah. So this will be last. So this this will be last episode of the podcast for a couple weeks, everybody, and the last video until I come back from a vacation. There, see ya. everyone. And before we get into talking about different things, everybody, the podcast, everyone, do want to take this everybody to pay our respects to different individuals that unfortunately passed away this past week, everybody. First, everybody is the Japanese voice actor, everybody, Taiki Matsudo. He tragically passed away earlier this week, there at the age of fifty-six years old. There, he's known for being the Japanese voice actor for SpongeBob, everybody. And he's also a voice work there for the Dicey Warrior video game series there by and as a uh, Lafette in One Piece there, so I want to just have some condolences there to Matsudo's family there. And Matsudo on behalf on behalf of the fans out there, we're gonna miss you, may you rest in peace there. And we do also want to send my condolences there by to the VTuber uh Kasei everybody. Sorry if I mispronounced her name or what her, her name is spelled out K E S I I or Kasi Kasai. Uh but she revealed on Twitter by that her grandmother tried to pass away there. It's like I say, if you end up listening to this podcast there, you know, I'm sorry if you're lost there, may your grandmother rest in peace there. Condolences to you and your family there. Uh, and apologies guys, everyone, for anybody here to the birthday by did that so don't talk go. Um, hopefully we won't be acting up too much here. So that was everybody. Let's go jump right to the podcast, everybody. Uh, and first everybody, we're going to start things, everybody, with the birthday shouts for the week, everybody. Thanks, everybody. First of all, everybody, we are going to be shout out. Norio Sakurai, everybody. They are the manga author, by for the series Danger by Hearts. And uh, everybody, I introduced uh, Danger by Hearts uh, last year by the anime series, everybody. Of uh, anime adaptation last year by that uh, first season, like a season dropped early this year there. And I haven't done a huge detail this series, everybody, but for some clips of mine, for the friends of mine to show me there, it's a really good show, everyone. And I, it is on my list of shows to potentially check out in the future, by So, uh, Norio, happy birthday to you there. As for wrestling birthdays, everybody, shout out, birthday shout out, everybody, to Cheeseburger, by He's a professional wrestler, by And mainly remember him for watching his time to do Japan Paper Wrestling there. He's also done stuff at Ring of Order as well there. So, it's his birthday, pa- it was his birthday this past week there. So, Cheeseburger, happy, t- happy birthday to you, man. And everybody, we also got a couple of birthdays from the V2 work community, everybody. That made Dukido Bito, Buff Up, Takadashi Kiara, Mano Gawa Shina, and Project Melly there. Happy birthday to all you out there. And finally, everybody, you have a shout out to some friends of mine there, as well as uh, family members of mine, um, me and Kathy, my cousin Tony, Jared, Mary, and Dawn. Happy birthday to y'all out there. I'll be having a good week there, so. <laughs> and those are all the birthday shouts for the week, everybody. But, I guess for everyone, hopefully we'll be at too much here. Uh, Take care, everyone, hopefully last one bit. Um, uh, for doing well, let's go jump right to everybody. Go over some different things in regards to wrestling, everybody. Sorry, everyone, with recap of different shows that have been this week, everyone. Everyone, uh, it's been one of, those, one of those episodes, everybody, where I won't be recapping Raw and SmackDown, everyone, as, uh, this past week, everybody, was a big event for three. We would that be in money in the bank, so, uh, happened this past Saturday night, there, everybody, uh, so, we're gonna be kidding off, everybody, by doing a recap, everybody, for every day that went down in money in the bank. Spoilers for those who haven't seen the show yet, there, so, one only word there, so, yeah. Uh, sorry, everyone, hopefully, last minute. 
Uh, first of all, let's go jump right to everybody, do a quick recap, everybody, and kind of my whole thoughts there, everybody, for Bite the Bigger Buy. And I'm not going to do, like, a huge deep dive every day that happened in Bite the Bigger Buy. Just kind of over the major things that happened during Bite the Bigger one. Um, So, everybody, show kicked off everybody with the mid to the big ladder match, everybody. It was Drew McIntyre, Chad Gable, Jay Uso, LA Knight, Andre, and Carmella Hayes. They were kicking off the show there for the mid to the big ladder match, one. And this was a really good way to kick off the show, everybody. It was a strong Bite the Big ladder match, one. A lot of crazy stuff happened during the match, everyone. The, uh, but he had uh, Drew McIntyre did come out on top there after he took care of Jey Uso there. Uh, Jey was trying to grab the briefcase there, but McIntyre threw a ladder his face there, caused it to go down. And I believe Jey got hit with a pretty sure Jey got hit with a claymore there, got taken out of the ring. Drew McIntyre came up and grabbed the briefcase there by. <laughs> he was the winner for this year's mid money in the bank ladder match, everyone. Which I have feeling Drew McIntyre was going to be winner by, but. And we won't get to right away, everyone, but there will be some further stuff everybody go on with Drew McIntyre there. Uh. <laughs> Later on the show there, but uh, it was a really short match for everybody, and uh, a really short way to take off the short one, and I uh, felt like the right person won, they were drew back there, so yeah. Uh, so I remember sitting there. <laughs> thereby, we had uh, the year called Change of Match by between Broad Breaker and Zayn Zayn by. And everybody, this, out of all the matches on the show, everyone, this was probably the toughest one for, for me to come with prediction with everyone. Yeah, um, because I got, honestly could have saw this matchup go either way there. Um, and it was a really good match between both Zayn Zayn and Broad Breaker by, but. But he did there, so he said he did come out on top there. He gave Barbaker his first pitfall loss there since he arrived on the main roster there. But it was a really good match between. It was a really good match everybody between both of everybody. And, uh, and you know, Braun Breaker looks strong to fear by, and I have a strong feeling that this will be the last time we'll be seeing Sammy and Braun battle out one on one there. You know, and this Braun did win to everybody, I thought there was maybe a good chance there would that, you know, there could be a rematch there between Braun and Sammy going into SummerSlam there. And that'll probably be when Braun dethrones Sammy Zayn and comes to do Intercontinental Champion there. Uh, sorry for everyone. Uh, sorry, sorry again for everyone. Next everybody, we took a little break from the reaction everybody as we got a surprise appearance from John Sear by. He was introduced there by Drew Strass, who was a special guest host there for Mind the Big there since it was live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, her hometown. She introduced John Sear by. And everybody, this was, everybody this, is a, this is where one of the most talked about things are by came from Buddy the Bigger Buddy. And John C announced everybody that 2025 will be his final year as a wrestler by and he will be retiring. He will be retired 2025 everyone. And we did get some clarification by for the post show by for Buddy the Bigger Buddy that John Cena will still be uh, will play play on on uh, competed there and do their things for WWE for the duration of twenty twenty five everybody. But once it's December of twenty twenty five everyone, John Cena will be closing out his career at WWE run. Um, and what this was surprised to hear everyone. I mean, I remember hearing people talk about when John Cena was going to retire there, but it was definitely surprised to hear that last day everyone. And it's gonna be a little bittersweet by with John Cena. Is gonna be retired by uh, uh, everyone. For those who may remember by and some of my old reviews, everyone, and I've done vlog videos by Ruby by. Now I got John Cena poster in my Ruby everyone. You know, John Cena's up there as one of my favorite wrestlers by. Everyone, I will admit everyone when I first got to wrestler by back in 2005 by um I wasn't the biggest fan of John Cena there. Although that was back when I was a kid by and uh. Yeah, there was this back when when my sister was a fan of wrestler by uh, she she kind of fell out of it there years later there but uh, we had, I'm sure people who grew up with brothers and sisters there get more comfortable there but you know yeah you know my siblings have different rivalries there with different things there and you know <laughs> me and my sister ever there had simply rivalries with different things there with wrestling being weather there you know you know Triple H was my overall favorite growing up there and John Cena was our overall favorite there um, but as as years went on by I've really grown to appreciate John Cena there. And what he's done for the business there. Now, I do understand some people's frustrations with John Cena over the years there. Especially the time period there during the, like the late 2000s, early 2010s there. Where John Cena was like everywhere and stuff like that. Yeah. And people were like really annoyed with him getting over certain talents there and whatnot. Yeah. But I, wouldn't, I don't necessarily blame Cena for that there. More so WWE. You know, since you know, John Cena was a base there. It's company there. They want to make sure to make him look as strong as possible there and whatnot. Yeah, so. I feel like over the years there, people have grown to appreciate John there, especially since he's wind down doing wrestling related stuff there, you know. Whenever he does go up there, it's a special occasion there and whatnot. It feels very special there and whatnot, you know. And everybody, it's going to be very sweet. Very John Cena by, uh, and, and when John Cena said that uh, this cup of course will be here by WrestleMania 40, winner by will be his final winner would, and everybody, I've had some talks with some family members by there, and we... Unless something comes up, everybody, we currently do have plans to go up to WrestleMania by for Las Vegas there, and, uh, it was going to be a little bittersweet there, by as I remember, you know, I first got to wrestler by, I guess around 2005, by 
I remember hearing a little bit about it from my dad there when I was a kid, but I didn't really get into it there until I decided to get one time there and heard about WrestleMania 21 there and John Cena was on that show there, you know. Now, next year there, we're about to wait around almost a, pretty relatively close to the day where I became a fan of professional wrestling there. For watching WrestleMania 21 there, and 20 years later, John C is going to be in the very, his, his last WrestleMania appearance there, so, you know. It's going to, it, I'm going to make sure to get myself prepared by for when it happens there, experiencing John C is last WrestleMania live there, so... But John, on behalf of wrestling fans everywhere, thank you for everything there. Um, we're make sure, we're going to miss you there, man, and, you know, we'll make sure to enjoy the ride while it's the last there, John. Uh, Sorry for everyone. Next year by we had the World Championship match everyone between Davia Brees and Seth Rollins or by or simply sure by was that if Davia Priest lost there he would leave the Judgment Day but if Seth Rollins lost the match he would not be able to challenge David Priest for the World Title as long as Priest was the champion there. And everybody, the match itself was good there, but there were some buts by that were a little awkward there, and especially one part close to the other one as a. Uh, um, I have heard people talk about it there, you know, but everybody, there was one part by where Seth Rollins did have hit like a falcon arrow there on David Priest there, and, um, I guess David Priest was supposed to kick out there, but he didn't, and the referee said of going count to three there, and rarely stop it there, what not, you know, and it's a little awkward there when stuff like that happens there, by, you know, you know, when people have good matches there, but something happens there, what not, you know, you know, and it looked like oh, one person... Should have won there if the referee did stop there. Definitely reminds me a lot of, you know, a time when Royal Raids and Dodds had their last minute match at Royal Rumble 2021. Where, you know, Royal Raids was tied to handcuff there. And he was had trouble get out. The referee was counted died there. Then Paul Hill just really stopped the referee there. And ended up having it easier to get Royal Raids out of the handcuffs there, you know. <laughs> And it's just some awkward moments like that there by, you know, takes away from the matchup there. Unfortunately, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes stuff like that happens there, what do you know? You know, Seth and Davey, they were having a good matchup there up to that point, you know. And it definitely a little awkward, Slider Wood, but it didn't last too long, Wood, as not until long afterwards, everybody, uh, Drag Tire coming out there. He said he was going to be cashing in on the World of Retreat trip there and serve himself in the matchup there, and he kept his word there. Cashed in everybody, making a triple threat match. And it looked like he was going to have the match wrapped up there, but then CM Punk came out there, and Blindside Drag Tire beat him down there. We did it up there to. Have David Priest finish off without having a joke slave there and retain the World League Championship there. So they retained the World League Championship once again there and further stuff go on with, with CM Punk, Drag Tire, and now Seth Rollins be that back in the mix there because Seth Rollins wasn't too happy there about what CM Punk did there because now he can't challenge the World Towel and get there as long as Priest is maybe there or whatnot. You know. And everyone what I have heard, some people. Um, not be a uh, too father by of ha of your back tire cash again and falling short on the cash in the tip there, the world chip chip there, you know. And I, I feel like some people were are getting a little too overblown by it there, saying, Oh, oh, this is the worst way to make cash of all time. This is worse than all the theory of David Sandow and all that stuff. Yeah. But I, I look if it's one thing if you're not a fan of how it's executed there, but but calling it the worst cash of all time, overblowing a bit there, you know. Plus, they're buy you guys can buy or buy WWE. They are having a long term story, long term story being told with Drew McIntyre and CM Punk there. It's in one of those engaging storylines going on right now in WWE there. And it's just another another layer to that, everybody. You know, plus, you know, Seth Rollins there, he was initially going to be a part, he was initially tied in with it as well there, but he had to take a little break there after WrestleMania to kind of rehab from injuries he was dealing with there. And, you know, they had to find some way to get the Rollins back in the mix there. And I think a three way he wants to get there. And, you know, have seen a puck come in here. What is the problem? Have seen a puck here tossing it, it drew it to extent that the World League Championship there is, is the was the best way to go at it there, you know? So, you know, you have tension going on with all three of them there and whatnot, you know? So, and, you know, with. Anyway, but I'll go ahead and say it right there, everybody. Uh, not too long after, uh, not too long before, I uh, sorry, my ear some words there. <laughs> not too long before I began recording by, um, Adam Pierce did drop a video on Twitter there. And I'll say that Drew McIntyre has been definitely suspended there. Now, obviously, everybody, he's not actually suspended, would be. He's more sore light there, but, you know, Drew McIntyre wasn't too happy there, what happened. And went on the rampage there in the post show for Blade the Bait, so, <laughs> so he got, so he suspended there, sore line there, so, <laughs> So, a Drew suspended there, and assuming if CM Punk is getting brought to be close to be big cleared there, if Drew's out of the picture for Tab being there, then the next fast option your buys have him and Seth Rollins there. And, you know, Seth and Punk have had their counters there prior to when Punk got injured at the Royal Rumble there, so now they're now playing the seeds there for a potential matchup there for Seth and CM Punk are buying. Now, whereas we have at SummerSlam there, again, it depends on the recovery process there of CM Punk 
But considering how physical Pope got during the whole stuff there would with, you know, the Matt with being uh, get involved with the stuff with Drew there and whatnot, you know, and it's probably said to say what he is getting around to be close to be made clear that yeah. So that's how I felt with a little bit of a danger one just I, you know, for a talk about real quick for a bit there. So I, I did see some people there, you know, get a little over about the uh, cash in there for back tire and whatnot. Uh there my birthday there, hopefully last one. But anyways, everybody, uh back to the shore wood. We did have the women's money in the bank line metro wood. Where we had Teddy Stratton, <laughs> and Teddy Stratton, Eo Sky, Lyra Valkyria, the Yomi. <laughs> nah, yes, everyone. Sorry about everyone. I had to briefly send away from everyone to help take care of Master Reflexes there. It should be a little good for everyone. But anyways, everyone, as I was saying before the interruptions are by, uh, we did have the Women's Blade the Big Live match are by, where we had Zoe Stark, Eo Sky, Lyra Valkyria, Teddy Stratton, Chelsea Green, and Yomi. Battle out there to see what's going to be the Women's Blade the Big whatever by, uh, Everyone, just like the Mr. this was a chaotic match or one. And the ladies definitely took some brutal spots there by, uh, in the match or one. So, <laughs> you, know, def you know, definitely on par with the mids as well, everybody. You know, both matches were very chaotic, everyone. But the end, everybody came down to Chelsea Green and to be Shret, everybody, after everybody else was laid out. Um, both ladies were climbing some ladders there. But Chelsea Green's ladder got pushed there. And Chelsea ended up taking a big fall the outside. There are two tables the outside there, you know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> definitely crazy thing there, but it definitely reminded me a, a couple years ago one where we took a similar spot there, and during, I believe it was 2022, you know, it was, uh, for TNA TNA everybody, the anniversary sure would, uh, where her and other lady there were part of, uh, the, uh, Queen of the Mountain match everybody, and her and that other girl that had brutal fall two teams the outside there, that reminded me a lot of that there, so, <laughs> Uh, either by T Strad she took out Chelsea Green there and T Strad grabbed the briefcase and now she is the uh, now she's a current holder of the women's by the big briefcase there. <laughs> Everybody, uh, I have a feeling it was either, either your account come down to either Lyra Valkyria and and uh Tilly Trad everybody and Tilly Trad she come out top there uh <laughs> And uh, should be, uh, you know, had a good choice, everybody. Uh, Tilly Strad, she's been pushed a lot recently there, but she's a very bright beauty. She has a very bright future ahead of herself there, you know. And I'm going to be curious to see when exactly she'll be cash in the briefcase there, especially, you know, with SummerSlam World Roller by Yuba and Bailey. She's going to be set to defend the way she should against Nia Jax there at SummerSlam and Nia and Tiffany. Curly Gal got a little alliance going on on that there. So, do we kind of curious to see how that's going to play out there? If Tiffany's going to cash in during the matchup there or probably afterwards there. If you have wins and whatnot there, see ya. So, anyway, I'm perfect for a sec there. And uh, buy your stuff there. It's all good now. <laughs> it was her by. Uh, Money of Bay capped off everybody with the Bay Fair by with a six man tag match by with the Bloodline presented by Tama Tonga, Jacob Fatu, and Tulsa Koe by. They were taking on Cody Rhodes, Kevin Owens, and Randy Orton by. Buildings up there by from what happened at the end of Clash of Castle or by, uh, at the end of Cody's match with AJ Styles, Clash of Castle Wood, where Cody got blindsided by Tulsa Koe there. I uh, got back up from Kevin and Randy there, so that. And they were fighting back against the Bloodline there, then Jacob Fatu got introduced there. As a well as a wild card there to do a forcer there for the blood lad there. And Solo as pretty much it took his final sense of being the travel chief of the moment there for the blood lad there, especially since uh he and the rest of the body kicked out Paul Heyman there after Heyman rejected Solo as the tribal chief there, so <laughs> Uh, everyone, not gonna lie, everyone, part of me had some concerns on whether or not I was going to join this match or one. Not just because I think it was gonna be a bad match or one, but uh but everybody uh yeah, everyone, as y'all, everybody, through my recaps, everybody, for AEW, everyone, they have, they have a lot of six-man tag matches there. Now, what hit there, you know, I do understand there, since, you know, they got three of those tag championships there, and where the first six-man tag titles were AEW there, so, but, you know, but Jay White and the go and the Baby Gang there have barely been a six man tag matches as recent there, you know. And it just seemed like a lot of the six man tag matches by in AW has been kinda of put together there and whatnot, you know. Just have people on the card there, whatnot, whether it be a regular show of dynamite or through forbidden door wood, so there so, my uh, uh, my opinion on six man tag matches by have kinda of soured a little bit there recently due to how frequently AW has up there and whatnot on the regular shows and the peer and the peer reviews there. Nothing against anybody who enjoys this match or one, but if you do, by but if it might be if you do something too many times over and over again, there it doesn't feel as special there. The AW have been having way too many six man tag matches recently there. They should dial it back just a little bit there, or if they're going to have them there, at least have them at least have them surround the trio championship. So now thank you everybody. I ended up having a good time watching this match or one and uh, managed to do what they need to do there. It was a, a good match or one, you know. <laughs> And big cat to everyone, uh, they made them do different things everybody, and, uh, as for, you know, showcase everybody for Jacob Fatu everyone, 
for his first match of the year one. That did a pretty good job. Showcase it, what Chicken Fight 2. See what we'll do there. So that, uh, I did it, everybody. The Bloodline did secure the victory there after, uh, uh Togaloa interfered there at the referee, got taken out there. <laughs> the process hit the low blow at Cody Rhodes there. Blood by uh, beat down Cody Rhodes there. So Sokoyev hit the switch spike on Cody Rhodes to pit him. And get a victory for the Bloodline there. That's why he saw the first person to pin Cody since Cody became WWE champion back at WrestleMania. Now playing the seeds for Solo for Cody for SummerSlam there. So, hey. Uh, Sorry, everyone, person there. Hope the last one bit. So, everyone. Uh, uh, Sorry, everyone. Hope the last one bit there. So, everyone. I thought Money the Bank was really good, everyone. But, uh, you know, it was a really good show overall, everybody. But, uh, a lot of big stuff happened there. The matches were pretty good there. But, and they definitely, um, definitely up there. One of the strongest shows, everyone. But, uh, and definitely did a pretty good job in terms of advancing their storylines there and whatnot there. So, yeah. So, for those of you who haven't checked out by the Bank here, one, do recommend checking it out there. And anyway, that's pretty much a recap for by the Baker by Now, it's time for the recap everybody for AEW Dive everybody. Their post show one from Forbidden Door Wood. There one. As a quick thoughts on Forbidden Door Wood, I thought Forbidden Door was a good show overall there, but I don't think it was as good as previous years for Forbidden Doors there. But it was still, I, I saw a relatively good time there. Now, Right, everyone, you know, I, you know, there could have been some matches there that could have been taken off the card there, so that, you know, be able to it was at worth that of there, but there were enough good elements there, by enough to join matches there, you know, I had a really good time checking out from Enduring Woods, so yeah. So everyone, there are following things up, everybody, there's a post show, everybody, with Beach Break, everybody, for AW Dynamite, everyone, uh, so, hey. It was go quick drink cap everybody. It already happened for Dynamite, everybody, which is their Beach Break special, everyone, so. Uh, for doing one, let's go jump right to it here. Uh, so everyone, sit there. Uh, there there. And our show began by with Renee Paquette doing a backstage interview there with Dale Garcia there. It was joined by Dave Edger, Mike Menard, Matt Menard, <laughs> sorry, what? And first much talk about how much pressure is there for Will Ospreay, the main event matchup there, how big of a matchup is there. Garcia was set to say he's no stranger pressure, but this is the most important night of his life. He respects early about Will Ospreay, but he promised himself that he's not losing the match. The MGF comes by everybody, and, uh, Offers it would be a Dario Garcia scored there during the matchup there. Dario Garcia accept there. And Jeff will be joined uh, Garcia for the main event matchup there ringside. Then we had the first match uh, there by with Brian Nielsen versus Parker by in a semifinal match of wood for the Owen Hart Cup for Wood. And spoiler, yeah, for spoilers for those who didn't see for Ben Dory Wood. And one of the advertised matches was Brian Nielsen versus Shingo with the Takagi one. And they decided to win that matchup there. Now, two days off with Packer who. Defeat Claudio there to advance into round two there. These two had their some of a match up there. And anyway, I gotta say, everyone, this was a really good match to kick off Dive Iron Wood. I really enjoyed a lot of Dale, Dale said Pack's work there. And the two of the really did a really good job by the kick off the show there. Yeah. And anyway, so, anyway, they only had like a few one one counters there by my melee though of Dale, yeah, you know, Brian Dale said and Pack there during the time WWE there, you know, when they first when I first got introduced to everyone, and yeah, I thought it was I thought that was one matchup there that would be cool to see WWE there, but I'm glad they happened here with Dale said and Pack did a really good match there would. Really back and forth action there, but in the end, Dale said the victory there by by having a crucifix pin there on Pack for the win there. And that's our overall one really good strong start to die uh, for strong start to everybody through the matches there. And uh, we're gonna check out highlights there in the matchup. You all know, have it. So yeah, there definitely a strong contender for a match tonight there for me this past week at Diamond Everyone's yeah. There by we had Renee interview with Will Nightingale for her matchup there with Bruce Atlander. I talked about that stuff there. Uh Will Nightingale there would say the no, the batter smile anyway is her mantra and the words she lives by. And she has a she looks on the she has like the bright side and the world pain of suffering. But Chris Allier, I think we mocked her. But they understand that it's for people who need it. For the little girl who wanted to be one of the best wrestlers in the world. Who knocked down and got up again. And she's going to kick Sailor's butt and make her way to the world title. That led to commercial break everybody. Then we went to the ring with everybody with Mark Briscoe everybody. Mark Briscoe was cutting kind of promo there. And he was he was announcing himself everybody as the first member of the Do Your Buy for the Blood Good Fetcher would. Which, for those of you who are too familiar with Guns are by, it's pretty much AW's um, uh, version of War Games there. They've had it since 2021 there. They were originally going to have it back in 2020 or by, with the Elite versus uh, Air Circle there. But those plans got canceled there due to the COVID pandemic there. So they hold it off there for quite a while there. And that They had the first one back in 2021 there, and they've been bringing back once a year since then there. Uh, so far by, members of Leader by, with the Young Bucks, Okada, and Jack Perry there, and Jack and Mark Briscoe confirmed himself by buy for TVD there. But I didn't have too much time to talk to everyone as he got blindsided there by 
Jack Perry there, who came off of winning TZ Championship at Forbidden Door. Uh, Terrible burst of their only last one bit. <laughs> they call Riley, try to come in there, eat the odds. They got Blight somehow caught out there. The Young Bucks eventually came out there. Then they were eventually chased off by the Acclaim there. So everybody, we're, we're starting to see possibly who's going to be on Team AEW Year One. So uh, at least a good amount of people in Team AEW Year One. So uh, anyway, I have a feeling Swerve might potentially get involved there. Especially since, you know, he had his previous encounters with the Elite there. It's like not too long ago there. Um, uh, and the Elite offered you know, a spot on their team for Swerve. But Swerve rejected there whatnot. The, uh, everyone, but Swerve did not show up for this episode. Right? That is one of the few uh, issues I had with this episode. Dive everyone. Would it have been nice to hear a little something swerve there and kind of talk about stuff with the old hard cup permit and whatnot there, you know. But uh, I'm sure we'll get something swerve there uh, of this upcoming episode of Dynamite there, so yeah. There, by we have our backstage interview with Renee there. She's talking with Tony Swerve there. Talking about, you know, Mariah and her upcoming matchup with a car sheer by the women's portion for the Owens, uh, for the Owen Hard Cup permit and uh, And it should be a good match for everyone. Uh, 0% there. <laughs> anyway, I have talked about potential winners everybody from the winner's side there, you know. Mitchum Moraya made there. You know, she advanced there by beating uh, Soraya during the pre-show for Forbidden Door there. Uh, and Karashia there, I believe she defeated Dion Perrazzo back on Collision there. And I really enjoyed Karashia by. She's one of my favorite women's wrestlers in AEW there, you know. And her, her and Tony Storm have their history there, so I could possibly see her win the tournament there, but... But, uh... I have a feeling it might be leading a little bit towards more towards Moraya made there, but I guess we'll wait to see. We'll uh, get close to the end of the tournament once see it. Speaking of women's side by, we did have Chris Settler, well, Knights of Glitterwood, and their collision by for the semifinals of Wood, for the World Hardcore Orbit. And this was a pretty good match between both Riss and Will Irwin. And this match definitely had a lot of build to it there. It was considering everything that's been going on between Chris Settler and well, Knights of Gale there, but it began all the way back at Double or Nothing there, so I had to. But either one, Will Knights of Gale did get the victory there after so they hack off the way there. Try to set things up there for Chris Sattler to blindside Will Knights of Gale there, but things backfire there. Will Knights of Gale rolled up Chris Sattler to win, and she'll be advancing to the finals of Orbit there. So <laughs> that was a good match, everyone. I have heard some people debate there about um, whether Willow should have won the matchup or not there. And I want to do get it there. Willow, she won last year's tournament there. She probably did need this win there. But at the same time, everyone's kind of like what I talked about there with Drew McIntyre and also see a Pucker would. You know, it's all, it's all part of, you know, building a long-term story or by long-term story there, would. And what the, and, you know, the stuff, you know, one of the major feuds going on right now with AEW is the stuff with Knights of Gill and Chris Sattler there, would. Um, and I feel we will probably see a rematch between those two there uh, for all in London there. You know, Chris Sattler, she might get involved there, a possible low there, stuff like that, you know. So while Maria May has her match up there with Tony Storm, again, if she goes through, she has Sheeta there, and um, then I'll save Willow and Chris there to have their match for all I love to be. Next year by, we had uh, another interview boy with Renee Paquette there. She was interviewed with uh, Jeff Jarrett for his own match matcher by the way, Hard Cup Torment there. Jeff Jarrett walking away there, but Jay Lee has to speak on his behalf there, saying Jeff has never been more prepared for anything in his life. It's not just wrestling, not just not wrestling, it's about honoring one of his best friends in the business, Owen Hart. And everyone, everyone that, uh, everyone would be, yeah, it, it's cool that, everyone, sorry, we might have missed my sir, my sir, one that, but, uh, everyone, it's cool that they had Jeff Jarrett, and it makes sense for him to be the tour one, especially since, um, he was very close with Owen Hart there, and, he was part of a tag team with Owen Hart there when he probably passed away there all the way back in 1999 there, you know. I've had birds, people talk about different things there, what, you know, with Jeff Jarrett there, they could have, you know, had like a story go on there whatnot and have Jeff Jarrett, you know, have, you know, win the Owen Hart Cup tournament there and go into, not necessarily win the AEW World Championship there, but, you know, have a strong showing there so that and, you know, going further and tournament there to honor his friend there so that, you know. And, you know, that would be cool, Sir Wood. But I have, but I have a feeling that something was going to happen there, Wood. You know, let's start somebody come back there, which we'll get to here a little bit, Wood. Whenever Jeff Jarrett has his mystery opponent there, the wild card there, for the old hard cup tournament there, just a little bit deep. Anyways, everybody, we did cut commercial breaker, Wood. And, um, there we went to have some everybody with Tony with to Shavani there introducing Britt Baker. Britt Baker, by She made her long return, long away return by at Bourbon Door there after, uh, Mercedes of Day defeated Stephanie Vakor. For, and they do a top match up there for the AWTBS championship and the New Japan Strong way championship there. But, uh, uh, Zero Burst there. Uh, Brent Breaker, she got the bike there and said she missed. She missed hands there, shot way too long and way too hard. What she would day when she came back and came clear, she should just talk to the fan there. 
She wanted to talk about three things. The past, present, the future there. Past is a lesson. Present is a gift. And future is a motivation. Start with the past. People must have been wondering what she was, where she was for the last 10 months. The answer was always she was injured, but we know it. It would take a more, a couple, or a disc, or hip, limbrum, labrum to keep her away. November, she was banged up and running empty, but she looked in the mirror and said she was good. Till one day, she wasn't, because one day she started feeling sick. The room spun, her vision blurry, and her arm was equally numb. She said she was good and tried to open the bottle of water and quit. Her entire right side stopped working, so to sum up, she spent the week in the hospital with a transient, sorry if I butchered this, or by a transient eschemic attack. Which it sits when your brain is get, isn't getting enough blood and works out for a stroke, sometimes called a beat stroke. She talked to Tony Todd that she needed to stay home, get herself right, and he said, Okay, let me know when you're good. Took to the present, she's here, she's clear and healthy. And when she came back, she didn't know if anyone would give a damn when she made her entrance. And the fear of rejection isn't rational, but vulnerability is showing up even when you have no control over what will happen. So they, when she did for wrestling, we welcomed her back. She was first. She was referred to the fans there, the wards, and the unique chance. For that, she will always be in our quarter because at the end of the day, she's one of us, and she means that from the bottom of her heart. On to the future of motivation, she said, "When you're going through a hard time, be present and go through it because it will be better on the other side." Because we all possess the impulse to be elite. And she's, she hears we have a new female face in the company. And she runs Mercedes from day down for having three letters. And she didn't earn. And she forced chance with her entrance music. <laughs> for the whole CEO bit there by uh, Mercedes from day's entrance music. Everyone. And Brent Baker would say the only letters the company better are DMD. Then we cut away by to Cornhorn Hawk, Hawk in there. The vehicle rolls up there. Mercedes from day steps out. She's screamed by the Young Bucks there. They tell her her celebration cha or change her celebrations right there. And they get that also prepared while Brick Baker's the ring. Monday makes her entrance there. Dances like uh, Baker is sitting there before making the show of realizing she's there and asking if she's in terms of something. She tells Chicago it's time to celebrate with their dual champion. And Brick says she gets it. She outshined her moment at for the door, so now she's trying to outshine hers. Monday scoffs, but she's having to talk about for door where she became dual champion, and she should have known Brick would come out and steal her spotlight. Which, <laughs> yeah, chance, uh, shut the F up chance everybody from the crowd there. <laughs> um, they would go on and say she wants to show everyone what a real star looks like and make her. That's right, everybody makes everyone. Uh, uh, sorry, everybody makes everyone. everyone yeah. Eventually, essentially, everyone, Bear Baker and Chad Challenge and Mercedes Monday there to a match with Mercedes Monday Alley there. So uh, they reach the match up there, and that's one of the big matches now set for all in London by Bert Baker versus Mercedes Monday everyone. Now, everybody, when this segment initially happened, everybody, I, uh, now when this segment initially happened, everybody, I, it took me a bit to get into it, wood, because I felt like this was one of the more longer segments, everybody, they know he's done a while there, you know. And when Britt Baker would, she, she did a pretty good job there, her comeback for her wood, and she did, she did do a good job getting the crowd vested there, but, uh, having her segment there at Boyd and to have Mercedes with any stuff going on there. Now, what hand do her stand there does lead to, you know, the stuff there, whatnot, you know, and set there a matchup at all in. But, but, uh, I, but I would have, I probably, I probably would have gotten more to it if, 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 if some time was stripped there, would, you know. I said, same thing overall, everybody looked back on it. I thought it was a pretty good segment there and did a good job setting up for her. Britt Baker and Mercedes with any there. In regards to setting up their match for all it wanted there, and it should be a good match up there. But this segment did, but this segment there did take a little bit too longer, would. Yeah. They probably could have tripped like a few minutes there, and it would have been just as effective there in terms of getting it set up there and whatnot. So that's just my opinion, would. So still thought overall was good, would, but it could have had a few minutes tripped down there. Yeah. As everybody, we had our review with Brene Paquette Wood. She was in review with us right there about tonight's match with Dylan Garcia there. But I did last a little up there as uh, Don Callis came up there. We asked Brene to give the broom and tell his dog he doesn't they say. Not his fault. Osprey is referred to stuff that happened at Forbidden Door there where Osprey fell short on being swerved for the world towel there. He's a referee. Could, if the tire driver, he knows he's got to say it's hit. But he's not that guy anymore. He tells Callis all he's done for him. And he professes his loyalty, but is, is heartbroken on Sunday and wants out of the Doc Callis family. Callis says he's normally not normally in the habit of laying people out of side agreements, but he's proud of Will Spray and what he's done with his life, having to do with doing the favor, and maybe one day he'll ask for him a favor. 
ended up hugging there while Kyle Fletcher looked looked in there. Both Dawn and Kyle ended up leaving there. Um, so everyone else out there playing stuff there by for Will Osprey by and the Dog Callis family. And that's what you wonder by we will get some all up there with Osprey and the Dog Callis family there. That so yeah. Thereby we end up having um Jared killing everyone. Anyway, sorry if I sound like a broken record, but, but I just can't get into the whole Silver Chris Jericho as current character there with the lurid tree what not, you know. Uh, Jericho had a kind of promo there, you know. It says it's going to be for commentary there for the matchup, which was gonna, the next matchup was going to be Hook, Joe, and Shibata taking on Brian Cage in the Gates of Agony there. But Jericho ended up having Taz uh, kicked out of the commentary booth there and stuff like that, you know. And Taz was relieved of his commentary duties for the rest of the evening there. It was had to leave the building there. Thereby, we had, I said, what we had the Gates of Agony and Brian Cage against Hook, Katsuori Shibata, and Samoa Joe Wood. And everyone, everyone, this was, uh, everyone likes to hear what this is. Another, yeah, another case of my, yeah, you know, now, so people are gonna say, oh, Hunter, it says Sean Dominic Joe with his reward there. And I'm not against everyone. I think so far what they've been doing with Joe Hook and Shabazz they retained there. And I've been digging what they've been doing with them as a crew. But I thought it would be a lot more effective there if the match was a short one there. I mean, I can't, you know, kind of got to talk about everybody with the subject with anyway having too many six man tag matches there and having the blast too long there and whatnot. You know, there's just another case that there. Nothing against the wrestlers in the match or would it just that, you know, if you're going to have multiple people involved there, at least have some hype with it and build up into it there and whatnot, you know. And stuff like that, you know. But like I said, this is pretty much, uh, you know, a matchup there where Joe is where we get a win there, which he eventually did. Then he got beat down by Jericho and his crew there. And Hook especially got beat down afterwards there. <laughs> and and they would beat him down again later on. And Jericho would have thrown the fireball there in Hook's face there. So, yeah. Then we could commercial breaker by uh, after the, the stuff with the, the post match stuff with the tag match up there. But. Then everybody we had the next match by the Ohio Cup Tournament one, which was Jeff Jarrett taking on the Wild Card by, which was returning Hangman and Pager by. Everybody had a feeling that Page was going to be the um, reveal everybody for the Wild Card Tournament there, what there would, you know. And everybody, it was a, it was a decent match one. Jeff Jarrett had a good showing there, but uh, Hangman and Page, you know, I feel he was going to be winning there as fat, you know, so. And they did win there, beat Jeff Jarrett there as fat. Things up here for him and Jay White are by for collision, which I have checked out some of the results of collision are by. And Hey Man Page did beat Jay White there, so it'll be uh, Page and Dale Sid, the follows the old hard cut three on the mid side there. Or the winner will get the opportunity to face Swerve at all London there for the World Heavy Championship. So I said, I want Hey Man Page and the win there. And uh, Page also did also get some new interest music there as well. Kind of solidify his new heel character there and whatnot. To, uh, and a beat down Jeff Jarrett after the matchup there. And was having an interview with Renee there. But then Leah Brolin there congratulated the Page and whatnot. And asked if he could join. And they pretty much asked him to join up with them for Blade Guts there. Uh, Page is grabbing Matthew there by his lapels. It says he's not a puppet or a child. He doesn't need any, doesn't need any more games. He's in the Owen. He's going to win the Owen. Now, Paige made it clear he's not aligned with the Elite for now there. He only, and I said they only agreed to be the wild card pick there for them. That way he could uh, match Swerve there, so. Which makes sense there, you know, especially how much of a heated rivalry Paige and Swerve had close to the end of the year, what not, the end of last year, would see so yeah. And going into 2024, so yeah. Thereby, we had, maybe thereby, Will Ospreay versus Dale Garcia for the National Championship in Wood. And it was a really good match here, Wood. You know, everyone... Even though I have, you know, I knew Will Ospreay was going to win her but I will give any credit there. You know, they have been putting effort there to, you know, have Dale Garcia be pushed as a established star there, you know. Now, how uh, how is this going to be going forward for him after this stuff here, Wood? I'll have to wait and see there. But, you know, Dale Garcia had a good show in there, you know. And if he plays the cards right there, I can see Garcia being a face for EW there. So, yeah. But everybody, either would, um, uh, there's one part by where MGF tries to hand over the dead ring there to Dale Garcia. Garcia refused to accept it there. And Will Ospreay to hit Garcia with the hidden blade there to get the win. Ever to the last championship there. Ospreay consulted Garcia there, who was disappointed in his loss there. And yeah, Will Ospreay first selling Garcia there to keep his head up there. And MGF went over there to consult Garcia there. But then, and beat Dale Garcia there. MGF turned to heel there. So that, uh, MGF ended up turning heel there. So that, uh, and be up down something like there, you know. And people, there were people trying to get MGF off Garcia there, but then Will Ospreay came out there. That's when MGF backed off there, but. And Garcia getting stretched out there. 
And if you have fully explained his action by like collision would, that failed fully solidify him be a heel character once again there. And play the scenes for him and Will Ospreay for all in there. And, uh, so. Now, that one, I didn't watch Collision Wood, and AW was doing the random thing there where, you know, they have different things on Collision there around the same time as Money the Bank, you know. Now, now I did see some of the highlights of everybody, you know, when the beat MJF's for everyone, and really good promos of everyone, and MJF's back to his old heel persona there, so. And I'm kind of curious to see what's going to be going on with MJF and Will Ospreay going into, going into all of London would see it. So overall, what I gotta say, it, I gotta say, what it, it was a for those it, overall, it was a relatively good episode of everybody. And out of the episodes I checked out since you know doing the recaps, everybody it's definitely been the strongest one I have talked about here. The I guess one, uh, sorry, I'm sitting there. And it's like I was like, hey, you are playing the seat there for some of their big feuds going into all of London there. And I think say what I still had gripes everybody. Still not to hold some of Chris Jericho there and so that you know. The six man tag match between Joe and his crew and the Gates of Agony and Brian Cage lasted too long there. And while I did join the segment with Brent Baker and Mercedes with they there, they could have, you know, trimmed a few minutes off it there, you know, it could have been just an effect there, so yeah. But we'll see how things go before you do your body in the next weeks there, and whatnot, and, uh, and we get closer to all in London there, so yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mercedes there. And I was supposed to recap everybody for a day everybody now. Everybody, I'm going to do one more show recap, everybody, before we get into the news, everybody, with first little bit of wrestling news there. Then we'll get to other team news, everyone, so. Everyone, this is going to be the most recent results, everybody, for everyone, since I, everyone, since I did do, since I haven't, I ain't doing the recaps for all the time, everyone, I decided to add one more show recap, everybody, that being NXT Heat Wave, everybody, NXT Heat Wave, have tonight there. Had a chance to check out there, everyone. The most part was a pretty good show, everyone. Oh, uh, so there were some botches, some matches, one, but overall, really good Sherwood. So, the very quick recap by of the things happening, Sherwood. First match, everybody had the, the Captain of Sherwood, which was Karen Petrovic and Arya Grace. And they were taking on JC Jade and Jasper Dick, Sherwood. And it was a decent tag match up there. You know, it did his job there, you know, as a kickoff show match up there. Like, Carmen and Ariana in the win there. A bit of a good feel there for Ariana that she, she was in her hometown of Toronto there, so. And I was like, there'll be balance and stuff there with uh, Carmen Petrovic and Aria Grace there with the two of them. They're going to be set to have a one-on-one matchup this coming next episode on NXT. There, by we had the first match of everyone with the NXT North American Chincher by with Oba Fibby taking on West Slater by. Everybody got to say, everyone, this is a strong pick for everybody for a match of night there, everyone. It's a really good match everyone between Oba Fibby there and West Lee. To a great back and forth action there. I felt like could have gone either way there, but he had Oba Fibby did get a victory there by defeating West Lee. And everyone, like there was a simulation at everyone that, you know, if Wesley lost the matchup there, he would not be able to challenge the North American title again as long as Oba Fibby had a championship there. So, I'm going to be curious to see what's going to be going on with Oba Fibby and Wesley, you know, in the future there for AXT, and with their rivalry to be coming in there, you know, for the North American title there. But uh, thereby, we had the AXT Women's North American Championship match everyone with Claudia Jordan taking on Sol Ruka there, everyone. This is Claudia Jordan's first title defense there, everyone, since she won it at... That's it, last EXC event or one, but, and her soul had a really good match or one, and definitely, and, uh, as, everyone, as everyone, another strong match or one, and probably my favorite there, the Wiz match or one that happened here on Heat Wave or one, but, they call it Jordan Image, get the win there, defeat Soul Ruka there, so you know, was successful in her first house defense there, get Soul Ruka there, and so we're good there. Uh, she looked uh, she looked strong there, you know. You know she didn't win. She had a good showing there. That'd be cool to see her and Kalai go out once again in her future there. And this was their first world match everybody. And um, it did not disappoint there. It was a really good match everyone. Uh, about probably a favorite wins match everybody for the show. And uh, strong contender for match of night for your year one. So yeah. Next everybody, we had Axiom and the Frazier defeating the XE Tag Tiles there against Chase Hewerwood. And this was a good match, everyone, although this was one of the match everyone that had some botches there, but in it, uh, so it kind of took away from certain things in the match, everyone, but it was still a good match, everyone, everyone. but in the end, Axiom and Nathan, Nathan Frazier did manage to retain the NXT tag titles there, but, oh, there was some miscommunication, once. so I do wonder if, um, uh, NXT will eventually, uh, set up a singles view between both Axiom and Nathan Frazier there, but for the time being, they're still together there, and they're still tag champions there. <laughs> Sorry, I burst it there from last bit. There, everybody, we had Roxanne Perez take on so, a little uh, vice, everybody, for the AXC Wave Ship Trip there. And we did have a really good match, everyone. Back for the action between Roxanne Perez and a little vice there. 
a low vice she looks over the feet there and at the end Roxy Perez and Misha come out top there and several rock, uh, pop rocks there although uh she was trying to do a triple pop rock there and uh I believe it was the sick one did look a little bit awkward there so <laughs> the Roxy Perez she came out top there a little vice a little short the feet there and you know I, I, it'd be, I'd be down to see two right back there but Roxy Perez come out top there she's still the actually champion one and finally, everybody, in the main event, everybody, we had a fail four matchup for the AC Chucher one with Ethan Page taking on Trick Williams there, who was champ going to the matchup, Javon Evans, and Sean Spears, everybody. And, uh, and there was a pretty good fail four matchup one. That pretty action packed matchup there, but uh, everyone, this, everyone, out of all the stuff that happened, everybody, this had, this definitely had the most surprise result, everybody, as uh, I did, everybody, and, uh, Trick Williams there, and, uh, and Trick Shots, there were people there. Uh, I like, ended up hitting the, hit the, hit the trick shot there by on the page there. The page was on top of J Javon there. And try get he tried to break up there, but Sean Spears got the way. Referee count of three and Ethan Page ended up becoming the new AD champion there. And everyone, like I said, everyone, I was surprised to see Ethan Page win the AC championship there. I mean, I had a feeling that he would it probably eventually win the title there, but I didn't expect it to win this soon there. I mean, it was literally like last month there where he was you know, has first match of their challenging Trick Williams there. And now, literally, the next show, next big show for XC, he's doing XC champion there. So, <laughs> that, was, that definitely surprised me, everybody. But, and I'm, I'm down to see what's going to be happening with Ethan Page as the XC champion would. <laughs> and, and XC already uh, doing a better job compared to AEW when it comes to booking Ethan Page there. <laughs> and when I'm... Everyone, don't we talk too much trash here, AEW, your boy, on the podcast here, you know. But Ethan Page is definitely one of those people there they dropped the ball with there. And it's like AXC, you know, pick, you know, having a strong start there with Ethan Page, there, especially him becoming AXC champion there. Like, uh, and they ended up teasing his first challenger by as uh, a show went off screen by. We had a little uh, clip there by of Joe Henry Wood. <laughs> yeah, you know, Joe Henry by. He appeared not too long ago, Wood, uh, for AXC there. And, uh,. <laughs> And uh, his his video everybody on YouTube there one has got like mo uh, like as like, I call it like, one of the most viewed videos for WWE's YouTube channel one you know since post WrestleMania stuff there so you know you know Joe Henry everybody he's been one of the you know most talking about people there this year by whether it be whether it be for his in ring skill or by his work he's been doing to recover he's there or from his musical performance there so I have to you know. <laughs> And looks like he might he's going to be Ethan Page's first challenger there for the AXC championship there but. All right, well, one thing I'm becoming kind of curious about everybody is that uh, if we're going to see similar to what happened with Jordan Grace and uh, Royce Reiser by those who found out for the AXC Wish shoot trip there, as uh, spoilers are by for those of you who haven't been catch up with the everybody, Joe Henry has earned himself a future opportunity at the TA World Championship there. Now, I don't know for sure if it's going to be a anniversary there and get loose, but... You know, considering Henry's been involved in some stuff there with, you know, with the system there and whatnot, I expect to have that anniversary there. And it does leave me wonder there if, you know, we're going to see a um, Joe Henry challenging for the AXC Championship there as the DNA World Champion there. Kind of similar with Jordan Grace, the Knockouts Champion there, challenging for the AXC Wish Championship there. I guess we're going to say not too long ago. So, everyone, AXC Heatwave, everybody. Pretty good show, everyone. Or you may check it out there if you haven't seen it yet there. So, yeah. That's all the recaps, everybody. Now we're going to get to do some different wrestling news, everyone. And then I'll be concluding things there by with uh, doing other news, other big news there by, uh, different things there. And then we'll, I'll be doing a Q&A there by, if somebody did leave comments there by on the previous podcast or what, I'll be going over that there a little bit. So, yeah. Uh, Sorry, I burst there, hopefully last one bit. Now, everybody, it's out, now everyone's out of time for some wrestling news there by, so, uh, uh, first of all, we're going to do, do a quick round there by of some uh, updates there by on different wrestlers or statuses there by. Now, first of all, everybody, out there, everybody, regards to Ricochet, everyone. Now, everybody, on uh, a couple of episodes of podcasts, everybody have talked about Ricochet possibly leaving WWE there. Well, everybody, it seems this now, Shield and Dunner, everyone, reports came up there, everyone, that Ricochet's contract came up at July 1st there. He's officially been moved to the alumni page over WWE's website there, so Ricochet is no, officially no longer in WWE there. Now... Now, what's going to happen with Ricochet next? Everybody don't know for sure there, but I have heard a lot of people speculating that he could possibly be going to AEW there. And, you know, and, you know Ricochet, everybody, you know, in terms of his athleticism there, he would be a good fit for AEW there. Plus, they can run things back with him and Will Ospreay, everybody. That was kind of like my first introduction to Ricochet, everybody, and Will Ospreay there. People were bringing, some of my friends there were bringing up the match they were having the G1 Climax, everyone. Or, it was either, not G1 Climax, the best Super Juniors of 2016, everybody. 
Uh, and I saw the match wood. It was really good wood. And the dip, uh, that was my first structure by two, both Ricochet Will Ospreay there, you know. And it was to have had really good match wood. It'd be cool if uh, Ricochet, if he were to come to AEW there, it'd be cool to see him and Will Ospreay right back there. So, yeah. Oh, speaking of W Superstars by their and their contract sensor body, we do have one superstar body confirmed that they have re signed with WWE there. That be the Angel Garza by or Sorcerer by at WrestleView.com. Angel Garza, uh during a live stream on Facebook there. Confirmed there he was he signed a new three year deal with WWE there, so Angel Garza there, re signed with WWE three-year deal there so uh, probably to say to say there that Humberto Carrillo there will probably do the same there and they'll be doing their stuff there with uh like Aldo Matazza there with Santos Escobar what not there so yeah next everybody we do have some some, some stuff everybody with the Doyer Wood as uh some more spoilers everybody for Collision Wood Marco Stutt as Bay's returned at AEW Wood. Those are two familiar Marco served by. He was one of the people that was initially part of the AEW roster there but he ended up getting released there uh, looks like apparently there's some tension there. I can't. There's a little fuzzy on exactly what went down there, but there was tension between Marco Stunt and AJ there, so he ended up leaving. He was initially part of Jurassic Express along with Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy, now go by Jack Perry. But Marco Stunt made his return during collision by Jack Perry was having an open challenger for the TNT Championship there, and Marco Stunt ended up as a challenger making his return to AW there. So and I'll be curious to see what Marco Stunt's gonna be doing by. Uh, He's definitely different there, Woods, as Marco Stunt by he, uh, he isn't that big of an individual, Wood, but he's very athletic in the ring there. So I'm going to be kind of curious to see what AW is going to be doing Marco Stunt there now that he's officially back with the company there. So yeah. And last little bit of news are by regards of the porches are by, with the wrestlers are by. Although this is the only non WWE and AW really related winner by. Joel Fuzzer by, uh, wrestler by Bailey Doe for his time in WWE there, announced that he has parted ways with the WWE earlier this week there, so, so we're fans of Joel Fuzzer there, yeah, he's, yeah, y'all look out there for what he's gonna be doing next there, what that's so yeah. Uh, uh there my person there, <laughs> but, so again for everyone, hopefully last one bit. Now everyone, the next little bit of news are by, is me, me taking some time everybody to wish in somebody's recovery your body. As this what I ended up fighting this out wood not too long wood before I started the fuck Esther Wood. Minoru Suzuki by uh, for New Japan Wrestler by I'm suffering an injury or wood. Refer source here at TJRWrestling.net here one. Morizuki called you know, to P against P for Tinryu project there at their Osaka Crush night on July the sixth. Where there was a scary boy by Suzuki that collapsed into the match up there. Therefore, he had to stop the match up there. Suzuki was taken to the hospital there. And Tinryu Project released a statement there for Zero Suzuki there. Regardless of Zero Suzuki, thank you very much for coming today. During today's main event, an accident occurred with Minoru Suzuki. The match was canceled at the discretion of the referee and Tinryu Project. Fortunately, Minoru Suzuki was examined at an emergency hospital and diagnosed with a concussion with no bleeding in the head or other areas. He has been given permission by the doctor and is on his way home. He has not showed any significant symptoms and is able to walk and talk hardly as instructed by the doctor. We will monitor his progress for two to three days. If necessary, we will conduct further examinations. We sincerely apologize to all the customers who came to the event, to those who watched the live stream, and other pro wrestling fans for the great concern caused by the assistance. Also, because the Ryu Project had decided to cancel the match, you may not have been able to join the match. May not have been able to... Sorry about my server there. You may not have been able to enjoy the match to satisfaction. However, the most important thing to protect is the lives of the wrestlers. We hope you understand that we made this decision as a priority. <coughs> Seven birds per sec there. As the match was stopped at one to one, it ended a draw. In accordance with PWF rules, the champion will defend their titles. We would like to express our sincere gratitude to the players and fans of the match, as well as to everyone who acted swiftly to deal with the situation. Our the players' disappoint is measurable, and although various adjustments will be necessary, we will do our best to somehow arrange a rematch, so we would appreciate your say in this matter as well. I really apologize for the concern it can be its cause to your project. Representative Shibata Ayana. And everyone, and uh, Suzuki himself did take a statement to social media there. And here's a translate, here's a, and they tra the translate it by through Google Translate here, say, I'll report it now. I did a CT scan and other tests, but there were no particular problems. I was kicked out of the hospital with the, if you're really fine, go home feeling. I remember everything. I even remember how I felt at the end. 
There's no need to worry for now. I'll just say one thing. If I see you again, I'll beat you all up. <laughs> so, everybody, uh, it's like Suzuki there. Seems to be doing okay there. So, I uh, do wish him well, everybody. Hopefully, and hopefully it'll be okay there. No further stuff will happen from there. You know, sometimes stuff, as y'all know, there was sports later by. Sometimes stuff happens there, you know, and, you know, stuff, you know, sometimes stuff happens there by, uh, you know, people got stuff the matches there, you know. Make sure that the wrestlers are safe there and make sure they are going to be healthy and be able to be okay there. So I have to do different things there, whether it be stuff inside or outside the ring there. So, yeah. Azuki, uh, if you end up here in this podcast there, hope you're doing well, man. I do wish you a speed recovery there. Uh, speaking of New Japan Pro Wrestling, everybody, this will be leads. So the last little bit of news everybody talk about for wrestling news, everybody. First, everybody, Hiroshi Tahashi, everybody, announced for the first time there in a long time. He will not be participating in the G1 Climax, everybody. I talked about it previously, everybody, in the podcast, everyone. The G1 Climax there is one of the major tournaments New Japan Pro Wrestling League have during the year there. And usually the winner of that tournament there goes to cha gets challenged for the IWGP World Championship there. Uh, normally it'd be Wrestle Kingdom there, but, um, they did announce, uh, instead of Wrestle Kingdom there, they're having Wrestle Diocese there, which is gonna be a major collaboration there with New Japan, Startup, Ring of Honor, AEW, and CMLL, so, why is it to say, you know, whoever wins that, they will challenge the IWG World Tile at Wrestle, Wrestle Diocese there, but Hiroshi Tahashi will not be one of the people there, so he will not be to pay this for one, uh, sorry, Wrestle there. Everybody, the last little bit, probably the last little bit of news everybody will be going over the podcast, everybody, and the last little bit of news everybody will be with New Japan for wrestling, everybody. As I earlier this week, everybody, a New Japan for wrestling there announced they'll be reorganizing a reorganization of the IWGP government body there. You get details, everybody, by source here at Fightful.com. New Japan for wrestling there is reorganizing the IWGP government body. There are a press conference on July 3rd. New Japan Wrestling President Hiroshi Tahashi announced steps for the realization of the IWGP government body for title matches and tournaments within New Japan Pro Wrestling. The IWGP community will be composed of former IWGP, IWGP champions and NJPW executives. NJPW will have further announcements soon about their commitment to wrestlers and officiate in NJPW events. NJPW wrestlers spoke out about either wrestlers getting a shot at the IWGP title when Moxley was champion. Tetsuya Naito defeated Moxley to win the title at AWX New Japan Wrestling for Bid Door. That's a great answer there, everybody. So, yeah. I mean, well, there was one little bit of news, everybody, for wrestling news, everybody. I'm going to share y'all real quick, everybody. That WWE ended up filing some new trademarks. We knew it's a trademark, everybody, related with Dirty Study, everybody. Mainly to the older Dirty Study people, everybody, like Super Brawl, everyone. It has led to some people speculating whether or not they're going to be bringing back some of the older WCW peer reviews there in some capacity there, you know, whether it be like live shows there or having different events there, announced it there or whatnot. So, yeah. I'll have to wait and see there. That's the case or what. But that'll be some interesting news there for WWE show with y'all. So, yeah. Anyway, that's pretty much all the wrestling news there by. I will be, uh, be covering one. Uh, sorry again for everyone. Hopefully, last one bit. Everybody, now I'm going to be ch I mean, now we're going to be talking about other new stuff, everybody, but... And anyway, we have quite a bit of different things to talk about here on the podcast, everyone, so... Now, first, everybody, as uh, stuff related with Ruby, everyone... Everybody, as y'all know, everyone, um, done some recent views over here, everybody. Um, I had a chance to do reaction, everybody, to Volume 9, and I checked out the Justice League and Ruby crossover movies, everyone... Everyone, I did say everybody that if I did it, here some news about Ruby everybody, I would be talking about it here in uh, some capacity or would. Hey, well, everybody, look, hey, well, everyone, uh, we did, everyone, we did do end up having quite a bit of news everybody on Ruby everyone. Now, at first, it was starting out with some concerned bits of news everybody as, uh, Ruby was removed from Crutchel everyone. And everyone, as I said before, my during my reaction by do Ruby everybody, I did watch Volume 9 through Crutchyroll there, but Ruby was removed from Crutchyroll earlier this week. Uh, that had some people pegging there, you know, well worried about what's going on with Ruby. And things we could tear by with Ruby, all those songs Ruby get removed for Spotify there, but there would be, there, there would be some different things cleared up everybody uh, about Ruby everybody, uh, and everyone, this is what, everyone, we would eventually get to news everybody, and, and there was a Dazzman teaser there on the Ruby Twitter account everybody, with the suit emoji there. Everyone, during this past weekend everybody, it was the Anime Expo event everybody, and there were a lot of different things. That's everybody, one of them being some Ruby related news everyone, everybody, Ruby, Ruby fans everybody had concerns of the franchise going under there. Y'all can be rest these there, as Ruby has been acquired by Viz Me everyone, now... Those who are too familiar with Vizbeer by, they are a company there that's part of the distribution there by for anime and manga there, everyone. 
and they have done different dubs there for some major enemies there by like Sailor Moon, Bleach, Naruto, and George's Bizarre Adventure. The list goes all I thought there. So, <laughs> and they actually have done some work with the Passerby with distributing the Ruby Manga series there. Now, this beer by have. And now Visbia have officially got acquired the rights for Rear Woods, so uh those were wrote there by by one of co-creators there by of Ruby Wood, as well as a voice actress for Yang. Uh right news there by there. Thereby uh the Tommy or Warrior by there hasn't been a specific news on what exactly Ruby will come back with different things there. Um but it teased a bunch of different things, the works there by uh and there was even a teaser picture by of uh, Ruby and the crew there. Uh, and new outfits there, so that uh, deserty area there, whatnot. So possible teaser by for volume ten there. So uh, there by Ruby again, new home there by for from his beer wood. And it looks like they're gonna be having some big big days plans there wood. If y'all want specific things there, more information wood. Uh, Visbia do have a blog there wood where they kind of break down different things there whatnot in regards of what to expect for Ruby there whatnot. You know, but in regards of the show itself coming back there wood, they haven't had. They haven't got like some details or what of when exactly Ruby will really come back there. But the fact that we got this news from that Ruby's out part of his video there, some positive things to look forward to in the future, but yeah. Now I kinda get you off with the anime news everyone. Now I talked about anime expert wood. Do a quick summary by of different things that were announced already anime expert wood, so uh, for any of you who may have missed different things everybody, so yeah. I'll be running things everybody through uh of course you roll dot covered by Right now, the article here today that they got there one. So, MA Expo 2024 served up another pack of weekend of news and excitement. And we got an overview of all the major announcements that were made for more of the new Pay of Stalky with Gar Belt, MA to Try Gun, Stargaze, other look at Soul Living Season 2 and Beyond. Let's take a look at back at the dust cells for the fly for the weekend festivities. Now, right, well, the first thing everybody was Try Gun, Stargazer by. He tells by us saying, learn about some upcoming series and it's some shows like the final phase of Gundam Stampede and the long awaited third season of Fire Flag. Now, uh, everyone, I remember checking out um, bits of the Gundam everybody, the old show back in the 90s or what. It was pretty good one. I do remember watching the Gundam movie one. The, 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 sorry, one, not Trigun. Sorry, one. Have my enemies mixed up for a second one. Try, I remember checking out Trigun there. Some bits of it back in the day one. It's pretty good, sure one. It's been a while since I checked it out there. I remember checking out uh, the 2010 movie everybody on Tsunami there. It was pretty good. And like I said, everyone, they did not also announce their wood. Uh, third season of Fire Force, everybody. Fire Force, other everybody really enjoyed everybody. Uh, really enjoyed the first two seasons, everybody. Uh, and specifically with Fire Force, everybody. And they did go into details, everybody, that the third follow season, the third season will be the follow winner, everybody. And they're, they are going to be dropping the two parts, everybody. The first one dropping, I believe, uh... In April 2025, I believe is what they said there. And the other part would be, other half would drop in the beginning in January 2026. So, so for Fire Force fans there, yeah, the new season will be coming out soon there. Uh, Servers there. As for other quick things, everybody, quick rundown of different things, everybody happened. And announcements for AMA Expert everyone. On this season, Reader AMA officially announced by Aplex and Crunchyroll there. So, now I'm not too familiar with the series everyone, but I have heard pretty good things about it from friends of mine there. So, uh, and now, they also, that's everybody that the season four, Dr. Stone, is in the works. Everybody will come out soon. Everybody really enjoyed Dr. Stone, everybody. Recommend checking it out there if y'all haven't seen it yet there. Uh, TV show Black Butler would with the Emerald Witch arc. There would. I haven't seen Black Butler there. I've heard pretty good things about everyone, so I might check it out there. So, but for Black Butler fans, everybody, the newest series will be coming out soon there. Also, Link Click. Sorry if I butchered this word right. Dong Kiwa. We'll do brought in arc trailer there. And so everybody from Blue Exorcist everyone. And having the Beyond the Snow saga there. And Blue Ex yeah. And we come out some of that January 25 everybody. And I remember watching Blue Exorcist everyone. Um, but it's been a little bit since you there would, so I think I remember hearing about the end the first Caesar first Caesar everybody ended up like depart, you know, sep you know, separate itself from the story I was going to the in there, but the more you read stuff everybody with Blue Exorcist everybody, they've been adapted different things there. They kind of did like a semi reboot there by um for Blue Exorcist or what and uh, kind of ignored certain things happened at the end of the initial writing of Blue Exorcist there and been adapting stuff for the Mogger Woods, so well, it's been a little bit since I checked out Blue Exorcist. I remember enjoying it. My first watch it would, but uh, Blue Exorcist is there. Maybe one of those shows I'll have to get back and watch it there. Can't catch up with there before. Newest stuff there for you to come out there. So, yeah. As for other stuff, everybody, as for other stuff, everybody, we got 
uh, teaser stuff for everybody for the new pay stock with guard belt series everybody and uh, a 2025 release date release window there for the series also stuff for everybody for guilty gear striver by dual rulers are about dual rulers anime regular cast trailer and our 2025 debut there would and I'm going to look forward to everyone. I played some of the Guilty Gear games there. They're pretty fun there. And I was and I'm surprised that there hasn't been any adaptation there up till now. So, uh, we look forward to checking out there. Then we got some stuff everybody for Suicide Squad Ace of everybody, which I've heard pretty good things about everyone. Might check out there. Then everybody, we got details for Batman Ninja. Everybody, Batman Ninja versus Yakuza League. MA film there. I have a reveal trailer there. And I remember watching the first Batman Ninja, Batman Ninja movie everyone. It's, it's a definitely a bit of a ra more random adaptation there. Batman there, but it's still a pretty fun one there. I have Batman and the other, you know, other you know, Batman characters there in ancient Japan there. Pretty cool city one. <laughs> but definitely recommend checking out there if y'all haven't seen it yet there. Then we have some stuff from Witch Chat Altaria. Altarier. Atelier. <laughs> Sorry, what bunch of stuff there. Uh, to have the trailer for that there one. And 25, 25 premiere there one. Had some stuff everybody for season two of Soul of Everywood, which I've heard pretty good things about the show about that everyone. Uh, I've considered checking it out there, but then everybody we got a um, teaser trailer by for season two of the newest iteration of Seven Daily Sins, Four Nights of the Apocalypse Anime. Now everyone, see, everyone, Seven Daily Sins everybody is one of those shows. Um, haven't checked everyone. I've heard mixed things about everyone. I've heard parts of friends by there and checked out the, the original series everybody. Um, the first two seasons are really good, but then it does kind of fall off as season three and four. But I've heard some relatively good things about the newest iteration of Seven Daily Sins, so. But I might check out everyone. Let me all know if you'd be interested in me doing a reaction to Seven Daily Sins there, so yeah. Thereby, we had, um, so everybody for most of Gutter Bite, Virtual Reality, also got them Silver Phantom movie there, uh, main trailer and visual there as well. Everyone, Bowls of Gutter Bite is one of those franchises I've been all off checking out everyone, but I have seen some stuff everybody, the Bowls of Gutter franchise everybody. Well, probably my favorite iteration would be Iron Blood Orphans everyone. Really enjoyed that series everyone. Now, I haven't come up with that as a recent there, so. Let me know if y'all, let me know if for any Gundam fans out there, let me know for, let me know how things been going for the franchise there, so yeah. Then everybody, we had stuff for Sword Art Online Alternative, Gun Go Online Season 2. And we're going to reveal a new trailer there, as well as open song there. And Blue Box TV AMA, reveal new key artwork, special AMA Expo trailer there. Everybody, we also got some updates for uh, some upcoming stuff for everybody, for the AMAs there, release windows there. For Star Buy, there was a releaser by We just went over for B Stars are by B Stars are by Heard pretty good things about that Sherwood. It'll be having its final season coming soon by for and started in December 2024. Also by we got um stuff for Ubo Blades and one. And they'll start premiering in January 2025. Then we got visual revealer but main visuals for Guard of Remembrance and Airwood. And art uh, key art are by from Season fire by uh of is it wrong to try to pick up girls in dungeon? Sorry everybody, I've heard relatively good things about it. might check out myself there. Then stuff for Blue Lock season two your wood, which will be premiere on Crunchy Roll, sorry, October twenty twenty four. Uh sorry everybody I've heard good things about it there, might check out. Then there's the Yakuza fiance anime there, which will start uh premiere episodes on October twenty four. The details are by for the uh the Apothecary Diaries Season 2 Wood. That's uh, Rebuild Culture Roll 25 year Wood. Uh, the Apothecary Diaries are by is another show I really I've heard really good things about her by. Uh, my friends of mine there really enjoy that show Wood, so another show I'm gonna check out there. Uh, sorry about bursting there, hope you last one a bit. Next year by there was stuff for by for Le like the uh, the Bright Art there. Yeah, see how was that there. Be sure a crutchy roll there. And uh, some more details are by for part three by of Bleach are by that the adaptation of the Thousand Year Blood War arc are by the final major arc in the Bleach Bleach series are by uh they'll start premiering new episodes are by in October 2024 would everyone Bleach are by uh Bleach out of the big log raid series are by uh, it was that yeah. And there was, yeah, there was, I remember watching Bleacher would but I didn't get to it there until like much later on there but uh, and. And when I was fortunate when I started getting back into watching Mary Wood, you know, with ever, you know, started with, you know, watch off of Mary Wood, Bleach was his, like, his final episodes there. What I saw there, they were really good there, but I did kind of had to get the friends of mine there and kind of catch me up on different things with Bleacher Wood, since they were aired, like, the last few episodes there. 
And I thought about do I thought about consider doing the future reaction by to Bleacher by the first series there, and then eventually do Thousand Year Blood War there. But now, um, uh, part uh, part of me is a little mixed on whether or not to do it one because uh, you know, it is a long running series there by you know, but what I have heard from different friends of mine there, Bleach, you know, they really enjoy Bleach there, but so I've guess there possibly check it out there once. So yeah, if y'all want to see new reactions to Bleacher by Leo, that comments below there. Uh, Sorry, what? Help the last part I gotta do here. What? Now, my last little bigger by where I cover by is some um, stuff for by with uh, manga, game, and some related stuff for by. Uh, uh, Kadocha announces new print manga there from Hir Hiramashima. Uh, sorry if I butchered the name of everyone, the uh, Sutobu Nihai, the boy who ruled the monsters, the light doubles there, and, ma and manga joined J Novel Cup line up there. Some art, art books are by, from uh, Bought the Cure Diaries are by, and more stuff Square Decks coming in 2025. Legend of Heroes trails through Daybreak 2 gets early 2025 launch the West. Exus Games reveals new slate titles there at the Expo. Announcement for a new Bleach Air one. Uh, Bleach Rebirth of Souls. Come up for consoles of PC. Uh, Delicious Dungeon Manga box set and more revealed at the Yen Press Anime Expo. Story trailer for Metaphor. A Fantasio RPG from Atlas, and the last little bear wood here is uh, I parry every, every I parry everything. Sorry, Kadoki and more join Ati light up a great novel club partnership. All right, it's uh, uh, those are one down. A good number of things everybody that happened in terms of that spits and reveals for MA Expo wood. So good number of things everybody showed off everybody for MA Expo there. So yeah. Everybody, the last little bit of MA related news everybody. Yeah, but, uh, is some stuff with Demon Slayer by that everybody, uh, even though I haven't seen it myself yet, everyone, Demon Slayer recently had its fourth season concluded by, which was only about four episodes long. Sorry, not, sorry about my brain fart. Sorry about my brain fart. There, I have my numbers mixed up there. Season four only have about eight episodes long there, so uh, that of the Ashira trade arc there. Everybody, the news care by for uh, Demon Slayer by in regards to its final major arc by that be the Affinity Castle arc by. And we got some news or by from uh, right from my source here at slashfield.com. It's the end of era following the release of the final episode of Demon Slayer Season 4. Crunchyroll announced it will release Demon Slayer Infinity, Infinity Castle as a trilogy of films to cap off a hugely popular adaptation of Puyoharu Gotoge's manga of the same name. So everybody, it looks like the last little bitter by for Demon Slayer by is going to be adapted to a series of films there. So, which I'm down for it by. But I remember uh, prior to um, readapting, readapting the trade arc here by uh, the the movie trade arc here by they did uh, doing the movie here by. I really I thought they did a really good job with it here by with Demon Slayer movie trade there and for movie here by it was really gauger one but and. Uh, a great follow up there to the first season one, you know. And uh, I mean, doubt to see, you know, there are many bits of Demon Slayer adapted to films there, considering how good Muga Train was, everyone. It was up there, by as well, like one of the top my favorite films are by. Check out Route 2021 there, so. So I'm definitely down to see them adapted the Infinity Castle saga there. Infinity Castle saga, everybody, in the movies there, so yeah. Uh, uh, so remember, sit there, the last one bit. Uh, remember, sit there. Alright, but I'll, I'm gonna do a quick lightning round of stories there by, uh, that very well things are better with the Q&A portion by for the, uh, podcaster one, so, uh, first of all, by, um, a little bit of a silly story by to share with y'all here, but, at Pepsi recently, that's her by, they're gonna be developing a smart can there, <laughs> uh, quick run through her by through Stack, the Stack3D.com wood. The beverage behemoth PepsiCo released a product last week that received considerable attention there for the industry and neural consumers around the world. A surely free and eye catching Pepsi smart kid. <laughs> At first glance, it looks incredibly technical, technological, as is the same size and shape as a 16 ounce can. The standard volume of an energy drink, but instead of having some sort of light label wrapped around it or design stamped directly onto it, there's a fast food screen. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it'd be a little funny to share with you all there, you know. It definitely some intriguing stuff there, but, uh, a bit ridiculous here by, I mean, smart, I mean, smart camera, I remember, I remember a little while back here by, uh, I remember seeing WWE, like, promote, they were doing, they got a smart shoot with Cricker by, and they were doing, like, promoting, like, a smart chair there, you know. <laughs> I mean, on you know, one hand, it's cool that they developed something like that there, but on the other hand, you know, you do have to worry, like, the practicality of it there, whatnot, so, <laughs> that'd be some fun stuff to share with you all there, but, Alright, well, next everybody, uh, 
as everybody got some stuff from the Nintendo reward. But now everybody, uh, over the past recent years, everybody we have seen a bit of a rise by regards of different companies using AI technology or wood. But it seems that Nintendo will not have a plan to use the AI or wood. A uh, quick word, everybody, with uh, here an article from GameWorldObserver.Colorwood. Uh, Nintendo has no plans to use Gen AI games, instead developing value that can that cannot be created through technology alone. Everyone, we have a full quote here by from Shutaro Urukawa, the current president of Nintendo there. It said, Gen of AI, which has been a hot topic in recent years, can be creative, but we also organize that it has issues with intellectual property rights. Our company has this as decades of know-how in creating optical gaming experiences for our customers. While we are flexible in responding to technological developments, we hope to continue to deliver value that is unique to us and cannot create cannot be created through technology alone. So, so everybody, it looks like the Tinder buy is going to be not helping out the AI on using AI or one. So, which is our yeah, I understand everyone. The you know, AI there is still in the early stages there. You know, and I have seen some people give legitimate concerns there in regards of using AI technology there for things there or whatnot. You know. Anyway, well, yeah, I, well, I have seen a good number of examples everybody, of people who use AI there just for fun. There, so fans don't really have any ill intentions there. They have, you know, there have been some bad actors there who can't use AI there, come there or whatnot. I remember, like, there was this one news story by about this one guy who tried to get another person fired there by using AI there to imitate their voice there or whatnot over something that uh, they uh, the person never said there or whatnot, you know. It wasn't until some time after there that it, they found out that the one guy used AI to try to get that guy fired there and whatnot. So, yeah. But. So, remember, sit there. Now, I'm going to cover a couple of, to cover a couple of other quick stories there by that I'll wrap up here and uh, the community portion of what's it. Yeah. But. So, remember, sit there. Now, first, sir, bye. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll talk about some quick feed to relate news there, bye. Yeah, uh, now, first, sir, bye. Yeah, uh, there's some news everybody in regards to Kitsuda Ai. Now, for those who are too familiar with Kitsuda everybody, she is like one of the individuals that helped pioneer uh, VTubers everybody. She got big around like 2015, 2016 there. And she's like one of the pioneers there for VTubers everybody. Uh, but Kitsuda Ai has been on Hayes for quite a while there. But earlier this week, everybody, there was a uh, uh, random stuff that happened there. Would uh, The live stream that happened on the Kitsuda Ai trail that lasted 42 hours longer would. But... And essentially, everyone, Kitsuda Ai, and pretty much, yeah, people behind the Kitsuda Ai, you just share one of that Kitsuda Ai will be returning in a couple months there, bye. So, and that's cool, it's cool, everybody, to see Kitsuda Ai there. Yeah, while well, I haven't watched Kitsuda Ai in quite a while, everyone, I do have a lot of respect for her there for pioneering and like a foundation there for VTubers, everybody. So, and it's good to see that she'll be coming back there. Uh, the other VTuber related story about the cover by, uh, there was a situation involved with the VTuber affiliate would. I want to one. She's a pretty big VTuber there, but uh, she's up there as one of the biggest independent related VTubers there, one. Um, everyone, during the X, everyone, um, Good Smile, come here, one. Now it's an Enderoid releaser by an Enderoid figure releaser by for Filler one. However, one, that announcement was going to take there, one, as, uh, as uh, apparently news care by uh, Fillion, um, and she did, she doesn't own the full rights to her VTuber mother would. Her model is a customized version by of uh, an artist there by, uh, or I, think, I believe their name is, uh, it went by Jindo there, so, uh, the Jingo, Jingo, uh, and Jingo uh, would, they were pretty, they were pretty much the original, uh, creator by, and uh, I said what, Fillion would, she did a purchase her, uh, Eric Baller would, is a customized version there of, Jingo's Bollywood, which can be purchased there through Boother Wood. And basically, everybody, in terms of service, everybody on Boother Wood is that you can use the models there for stuff like live streamings and content creation there. But when it comes to using said model there for using said model there for, you know, merchandising there, you must make sure to have permission to consult with the original artist there. And Jingo said they were not aware of. Uh, affiliate and good file company there and they haven't been probably bred there and uh contributions there you know yeah however you want yeah yeah purpose there from some different things or whatnot you know so now they've heard by it seems that affiliate and good file company there have is going to be working things out there with jingo there make sure they have proper bread there and make sure they're properly there they are properly compensated for their different things there now i don't know that was just be the only case there by because Philly she has used her ball there for other merchandise up there, like gamers up there, a couple other things there. But uh hopefully, you know, Philly will get that worked out there. Uh Philly, she seems pretty cool there. 
I have seen some people get whatever with her about some other things that passed there, but this was a legitimate call out there, but she seems to be working on fixing things there, you know, and hopefully she'll make sure that Jingo gets proper conversation with her things there, so that the... There was the last little bit news everybody I'll be talking about everyone. Um, as a story I talked about a little bit last heard by you, but there was a little while ago what I did talk about um, news in regards of Paramount to everybody. And um, they would try to look for a new home there or a potential merger with the company everyone with Skydance speed the league per league company there to, to pot some more everyone. Um, there was a bit of a halt there in the progress everyone, but that was a bit of a bit of update everyone. Uh, reading things everybody from Deadline everyone. Uh, Skydance VA gets forward to me approval for control of Paramount Global after lengthy chase. David Ellison's Skydance VA has gained a key approval vote for the company's proposed acquisition of Paramount Global, controlling shareholder National Music Inc. after seven months of talks. The deal was blessed Sunday by a special counsel of Paramount Board of Directors, a person familiar with the matter told Deadline. A formal announcement is expected as soon as Monday morning. Bloomberg News earlier Sunday was the first to report on the special committee vote. Reps from NIA, Paramount, and Sky did not immediately respond to Deadline's request for comment. Zero uh, percent there. While the board committee action is a milestone, one of the features of the current agreement is a 45-day go-shop provision, which allows NIA Chief Jerry Redstone to field alternative offers. Apollo Global Management Barry Diller and Edgar Bronfman Jr. are among those who have explored beds. Apollo, both on its own and partnership with Sony Pictures, has submitted formal offers in recent months, but they haven't gained much traction. Other terms of Skydance agreement, Redstone and her family will receive $1.75 billion with additional funds going towards Paramount debt repayment. The transaction is expected to be the first of two parts with a full merger between Skydance and Paramount Global to follow. A controls nearly 8% of Paramount's Class A or voting shares. It holds only about 10% of its equity value with that disparity A to complexity of deal negotiations in recent months. All right, well, I'm not going to finish with the whole thing here, one, but it looks like there will be some progress being made there, everybody, with Skydance potentially merging with Paramount, everyone, you know, so. And, or like I said before, everyone, I wasn't aware about Paramount's financial troubles there until I looked into it there. It's something that I had to uh, remember hearing about it first from Amat, everybody, from his podcast there, the Crazy Cartoon cast there, but... And I've been, I've been trying to keep up with it since then there. Most likely some progress being made there with Skydance and Paramount there, and visual merger with those two companies there, so... Everyone does leave wondering there, you know, if this merger does go forward or what, on what exactly Paramount mm -hmm. and Skydance will be keeping around there, which something they saw off there as you know, everyone, when it comes to big mergers like this or by usually companies there, they do have to sell some stuff off there to other companies there in order to make sure the merger goes forward there and whatnot. So yeah. <laughs> Sorry for everyone who will be the last one bit there. Anyway, that's pretty much all of the news or by I'll be covering here for podcast or by. Now everybody I'm gonna be the off or by with a bit of a Q&A portion by uh, questions asked there on the previous episode, everyone. As stated earlier in the podcast, everybody, if y'all want to leave a question, everybody, for me to answer for the next episode of the podcast, there, just leave the comments on the down below there. Uh, the question come from Rockstar Light, everybody. Uh, they have said, good episode, Hunter. Have a good vacation. Thanks, Rockstar Light. And uh, they got quite three questions here for me to answer. Uh, question one, in your opinion, what is the best wrestling match of the year so far? Um, I mean, people are going to have different debates on what's going to be kind of like the best match of the year or whatnot. Um, uh, but so far, the two big ones I've been hearing people debate about there have been either um, Cody Rhodes versus Raids at WrestleMania 40 and, and Brian Dale Sid versus Will Ospreay at AEW Dynasty. Um, and I get why that's the case there. They, both matches are very enjoyable there for different reasons there. When it comes to, or when it comes to Dale Sid and Osprey there, you know, if you're looking at perspective there of wrestling being art form there in terms of what wrestlers are capable of doing performance wise there, what they can do in the middle of the ring there, Dale uh, Sid Osprey there, so far, you know, the best example of that kind of stuff there would, and they too really toward the house now that dynasty there, but I definitely understand why people have that as a your contender there. But at the same time there, there's also Cody Rowan there with the storytelling aspects there, you know, you know. Put aside the course corrections up there and the you know, reports of WWE um, having to do Rock versus Roman there instead of Cody versus Roman to get there. WWE did course correct there and made sure Cody had a chance to finish the story there and it led to one of the best build-ups for WrestleMania we had in a long time there. 
and Cody Rowan I had a really great matchup there. I had one of the best main event events I've seen in a long time there. You know. <laughs> and when it comes to, you know, wrestling in terms of having strong storytelling that you would, uh, Cody Rowan there, definitely a great example of that stuff there would. And, and definitely had that big, good feel about everyone when Cody finally beat Roman earlier this year there whatnot, you know. And there was a big celebration at the end there whatnot and stuff like that. And, uh, and having turned up a bit everyone, <laughs> You know, not counting uh, things for Tyree Match or Wood. Uh, I haven't had anything heavy tear up there in wrestling, you know, in quite a while there. So, <laughs> and that, they did a really good job with that stuff everybody. So, yeah. But if you had to force me down and choose everybody, um, I probably would probably give a slight edge to Cody and Roman there. This, like I said, you know, as great as the match was with Dale, Sid, and Osprey's matchup was there, you know. There, the bill to match your body wasn't too crazy there, you know. It was a simple one there, yeah. But, you know, they probably could have done some stuff there, like some more interactions there with Dale, Sid, Osprey there to kind of hype up the match you more there, yeah. But, uh, I sir would, I'm not gonna be whatever there if people too prefer Dale, Sid, and Osprey there, you know. At the end of the day, you yeah, know, we're all fans of wrestling there, you know. And we should be able to, you know, express ourselves in regards of, you know, what we enjoy about wrestling there as flat, you know. And if people pick Dale Sid Osprey as their match of the year so far, I'm not going to get bad about it there. I, I acknowledge there, you know, hey, it's a really great match up there. I really enjoy your wood, you know. I said for, I said for, for a performance standpoint, wood, it is the best match of the year there, but... Favored by it, it, you have to do a mixture of the in rank performance there as well as a really strong overall story. You know, whether both be totally the match as well as league up into the match there to really have something, really have it, you know, yeah, I, for me to really get to it there, you know. <laughs> Why I said I do give a slight edge to Cody Roman there, but I'm not gonna get whatever there about people prefer Dale Sid Osprey there if that's their match of the year there, what that's so yeah. Uh, next question they asked me is, what are your thoughts on the street platform kick? Um, everyone, I did briefly talk about it there. Um, uh, right up kick everybody. For those of you who remember last time the podcast, everyone wants to talk about the stuff we talked about respect there. But, uh, everyone, for those who are too familiar with kicker by is an alternative, uh, street platform by pair of Twitcher wood that initially got popular wood with, uh, with the website being able to allow you to gamble there. Since, uh, kick was found by Stake there, a big gambling company in Australia there. And Twitch and a bang gambling there on the website there due to potential negative effects it could have there on their younger viewers there. So that was kind of like the what had kick be part of initially there, you know. Everyone asked for everybody, I'm not gonna get whatever uh, to whatever better would, you know. If you casually, you know, just gamble there once in a while and not go too crazy the money you spend there, then go for it there. But if you're spending like thousands of dollars there on gambling, then you should probably stop doing it there. But. That's that. It's all right to say would, so. But everybody, as I've learned more about Kicker by, it's definitely one of those websites there that's got a lot more bad than good for it there. And before I continue with Wood, uh, I do want to say to Wood that not everybody on Kick is a bad person there. And uh, so a couple of creators I have followed over the past couple of years there have uh, have done streams on Kick there. Um, So not everybody on Kick is a bad one, so. But I said Wood, uh, Kick. It still runs on the new website there, and right now it has a lot of issues there with having a lot of toxic individuals there on it. You know, when some of those stuff was there, by uh, people, you know, may, you know, making streams there by uh, being real jerks, people, uh, IRL, and whatnot. And, uh, we're probably too noble. He's the only name on top of head there being Jake Dordery there, who is uh, basically best way to describe everybody is you, you, you all, yeah. I'm sure y'all know about, like, some cartoon characters there being very whiny and bright there, and like that, you know, and talk, constantly talk smack there. Um, Jack Dory's kind of, or Jake Dory's, uh, kind of like the real-life version of that type of character there. But he, he, he talks smack to people there, but he's very rude to them there and whatnot. And he hires, like, big guys there as bodyguards to protect them there, so like And, uh, <clears throat> sorry, my birds are there. Um, anyways, everyone, but, uh, sorry about J uh, Jake Dory, your one. And one example there, person there, you know, be rude to people like IRL there, whatnot, they caught out of it there. Um, another one, everybody, be a Johnny Somalier would, who has gone over to different countries uh, in Asia there, and be very rude to the locals there, with most noble would be people in Japan there. And anyway, it got so bad that 
do literally get banned from the country there, and he had to go, like, different places there and whatnot, yo. Uh, last I heard from Mount Johnny Samoyerwood, that he was over to Israel there, and, uh, people are taking his crap over there, you know. Anyway, I normally wouldn't condone uh, violence on other individuals there, but we are someone who's being an active jerk there, and we're constantly provoking people there, then... It's a case of karma coming your way there, yo. And why well, would you ever hear by uh, Johnny Slummy there? Uh, people are dealing with this crap over there in Israel there. And there was even, I even appeared there was one incident of him, him getting arrested by police there. He was getting like carried away there and stuff like that. So <laughs> there's some funny stuff there by him. As for Jake Darby there he has. He is currently facing karma. So far by his, uh, uh, there was an incident by where one of his bodyguards ended up punching someone in the face there. And that person did do anything to provoke Jake there. And now Jake is now in a lawsuit there, so that with that person there, so yeah. And and what well, the other big thing you're by uh I'll kick everybody that take issue with there is that it's filled with online predators there with uh, some more notable ones being Zerka and Heel Bike there. Where you know now granted there will give kick some credit cards that they have have taken action there and banned it to them there after um uh, recent live stream, uh, live stream happened not too long ago to them there, praying some, uh, younger individuals there to a clubhouse there, and stuff like that, in Florida, and there was one part there where one person was weird, whispering something in Zerka's ear there, and a dude literally admitted to hooking up with, a 16, 17 year olds in Canada there, and a dude's a fully grown adult man there, you know, so, and there's stuff from Neil Mike there and whatnot, you know, and there was, like, some leaked audio that happened nearby where Neil Mike was talking about a bunch people there to lie about their ages there or the clubhouse there or whatnot so so yeah everybody um kick everybody they did uh, they did they did manage to ban them there as far as i know they are still banned the platform there but it did take them quite a long time to finally take action get those creeps there and uh i've heard from some people there that have that do that have been on kick there you know at least some friends of mine there to have watched the people kick there that unfortunately um, Zerka and Heel Mike were just some of the examples there. There's still other individuals there that are like them there and whatnot, and, you know, prey on younger viewers there and whatnot. So, Kick really needs to do something about that there. Everybody, remember hearing about a video about, uh, one girl named Melissa there, who was a four employee at Kick there, and she pretty much went into details there about Kick not being, like, the best workplace environment there and whatnot, and there were people within the company there doing different things there that would get you fired at other places there and whatnot, yeah. so, <laughs> there, in short, everybody, um, that's why I have heard about Kicker Body, it hasn't been that good, and, um, Unless the website makes some major changes there, they get safer for different people there, I am probably going to be staying off of Kick there, so. While there are some cool people on Kick there, I feel like the bad people there and the bad things overall going on Kick there outweigh the positives of the site there, so yeah. And the final question they asked me everybody is, what are your thoughts on mobile games? Uh, mobile games, I mean, I played several the years there, haven't done like a huge unit there, you know, but they can be fun there, uh, for passing time and whatnot there, you know, um. Uh, I played different mobile games on and off there, you know, like Angry Birds there, <laughs> yeah. I first, I remember getting Angry Birds there when, it, it went, when I first got the mobile games there, but played different ones over the years there on and off, like Pokemon Go, uh, you know, sometimes there, whatever, you know, I get on breaks at work there, whatnot, get football there, but... Uh, they're having some games there where I kind of fell off there, you know, not really interested in there. Probably most of them would be Clash or other one, um... Where I was having fun with it there, but the game kind of became more of the infamous example of people, you know, saying, you know, about mobile games there being uh, paid to win there and be very exploitive there towards people and their money there and whatnot, you know. And Clash Royale there, why they hear from people there? Uh, the community recently there, that's pretty much what the game has turned into there. Favorite more paid to win players there, and people try to do, you know, try to do the free to play option there, aren't really be that favorite that well there, what that, you know. And the developers haven't really been re well responsive to player feedback there, whatnot, yo. I'm not aware why they'd be fired, but here's a way. Not necessarily because I, you know, dislike the game there, like they did with Clash Royale. Um, but it's kind of fell out of everyone, yo. I stopped playing FE Heroes around 20, 20 ish there. Um, may I had fun playing the game there, you know, I played there, so I was a fan of Fireball there, and did, the game did introduce me to some of the older Fireball games there, whatnot, and some friends of mine there have helped me play some of the older FE games there, so I played it there, um, but, uh, I played Fireball Heroes quite a while there, but, might try to pick it back up there, but, oh, for sure.
And uh, the last bowl gave her by a trade out there was DK Goss Victor Wood. I'm sure it's pretty good things was friends by their wood. Um now <laughs> everybody is known for some spicy uh stuff everybody, but uh which it might not be everyone's cup of tea there, but uh I I was I entered with a mind there, you know. You know it, the gameplay is fun there and the um and the game actually has a pretty good story mode to it there, you know. Now it's still kind of like in the early parts of playing the game. What I'm um, somewhere like chapter four of the campaign over there, whatnot, you know. But it's been a fun game there, and um, compared to some other gotcha games there, they are a lot more fair in regards of their game, like different characters or whatnot. There, you know. I like some other ones there. <coughs> cough, cough, kid, and impact. Cough, cough. <coughs> that's sorry, I want to cough for a sec there. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much all the different mobile games I played there. You know, on and off there over the years, you know. And Joel there, you know, they can be fun to play there. I'm not into them as much as with console and PC games there. But they can be fun to play there, you know. And they're good to get on there. We don't have a whole lot going on there. So, yeah. well, everybody, it's pretty much everything that I got to talk about here. Which is going to be for sure, everybody. And our things up for this podcast, everybody. Uh, went a little bit longer than expected, everyone. But I had a good time, everybody. And, uh, and I'll finish our things up for everybody for the time being, everyone. So, I said, everyone, there won't be any episodes uh, next week, everybody. So I'll be on vacation there, but the podcast will be back in about two weeks for everyone. And I will be, uh, or I will have a uh, new video drop through there, everybody, after I come back from vacation, everyone. I'll be starting the Jurassic Park movie marathon, everyone. Sorry, Ed, is up the movie star with Jurassic Park, everyone, so make sure I'll do that, that there. I'll also be starting up my series action to Hasbro Hotel sooner, everybody. Other stuff happening sooner, everybody. I come back from vacation, everyone. But until then, our next up for everyone, you always saw your major like button, do channel subscribe, and the subscribe and notification icon so you see uploads. I'll see you next time for the big sale. Peace.